Good afternoon. Yeah. And welcome to your daily game face. It's Monday. Special edition. A special edition of special after school edition. <laughs> remember those? Yes. I well, I should remember those because this is my birthday week and I'm old. <laughs> old no i'm not old no. um i've had some good reactions this week from that but hello welcome to my show and and the ever stupendous there's stupendous the that there's, was the word that was the word for I today like the ever stupendous i've been called worse lou blasey today by relatives no <laughs> <laughs> see i told you when i walked in today there was something up with you no, you're everything's having fine. an off day everything's you're fine it's just monday it's you're just flat it was a really busy weekend and you know a lot of tender. I have. I can ask you about this. Yes. Because it seems like the last forty-eight hours, including today, I have had recall issues. Are you having memory? Are you having some word finding difficulties? Yes. Oh. Not word finding. Oh. Like name finding. Oh. Like I'm thinking well, of somebody. That's word finding. Is it? Yes. Yeah, but okay. name, like a name. Like I'm not having object. trouble speaking or emoting. Oh, it's just that's like good. I'm having trouble. So we know you haven't had a stroke. I couldn't remember Janet Jackson in the last show. Oh. I couldn't remember. Michael Jackson's sister's name. Oh. Well, that's, yeah, so you're having age-related changes. What an apropos <laughs> conversational topic. You're so today. cruel. <laughs> You've been Listen, cruel I'm right here to talk about here. this fact that it's my birthday this week, and yeah. I was going to talk about this, and that was very appropriate, mm -hmm. that you are having name-finding difficulties. And, good. by the way, good afternoon to Abby and to Joe. Thank you for joining. Um, and, you know... Thank you for joining. They also, you join. started the video. That's good. You what? You started the video in there so you could see the comments. I did. Okay, good. Yeah. I do it every week. Okay, I was, wasn't <coughs> sure. You're, oh, you are on a roll today. Let's talk about your problems today with your name finding. I have finding. no problems today. Your name finding. and well, so it's no, I just think it was a busy, there was a lot a lot of stuff going on this weekend. I was, I was mentally taxed, so I just think it's just kind of. Well, let me roll that into the, the tide rolling out. The topic of the day. So, the mm -hmm. topic of the day, first of all, it is a special edition. We are here on a Monday because I won't be here on Wednesday because it is my birthday. Yeah. And I have no shame in telling everybody that because I Since like my when? birthday. I love my birthday. You've been cringing about it for like two weeks now. Well, the age I'm cringing about. Yep. The actual birthday is <laughs> awesome, right? Because so right, I, yep, right. I like to celebrate the whole week or month of January. Sure, why not? <laughs> right? And I get, you know, people to buy into that and come along for the ride, right? Get John so, to step up big? What? Get John to step up big, I, put the pressure on? I Yes, oh, he's, yes, the mm -hmm. pressure's been on. So he's off the hook a little bit because I'm actually supposed to be in Greece. And I'm not going to be in Greece. Wow. <laughs> so that's what I wanted to do for this birthday. And then that didn't happen. Then I was going to go to Hawaii. And that didn't happen. So, you know, so we're it's a little under key. But nonetheless, it's going to be fantastic. Um, but I won't be here on Wednesday, and that's okay. Yep. But in in support of people aging, I was going to talk about that today and, and how people deal with it. Because I have a friend that also is turning the same age as myself, mm -hmm. and it's today. Happy birthday, Kristen. Hi, Kristen. And, Happy birthday. And she had a fun birthday, I think, over the weekend. You guys are friends and have the same birthday. Huh? Uh, yes, two days apart. But oh, two days old. apart. Okay. She's older than by two days, By two days <laughs> which I never let her forget. Yep. <laughs> so, and and everybody thinks of you know aging a little differently. So you know I have, you know, lots of different ideas that people give to me around like how they do it gracefully, how they don't do it so gracefully, yeah. how they do it somewhere in between, and um, some people really struggle with it. And people have been asking me like, oh my gosh, you're turning that age. I've had lots of guessing because I never just come out and tell because you know it's the 27th birthday again right. the anniversary of and um you have an x or something like that <laughs> <laughs> um and so people ask me and i don't tell everyone but i will round about it and then some people i'll tell and whatever but then when they find out they're like no because you know when you do the practicing of the preaching that yep. i do taking care of yourself as you do yourself you don't look your age and that's what I think. And I have really good genes, um, mm -hmm. I think. So, but I do take really good care of myself. I hope that I can say that. Um, you know, healthy yeah. exercise and healthy eating, and for the most part, and you know, all those good things. Not isn't enough it, sleep, though. What? Isn't it amazing? If our ages. If you look back at our ages when we were growing up. Yeah, we were like when dead. We, when we were young, and we were looking at people our age. We were so old. This is so different outcomes, huh? I know, right? Yeah. 
right? So, well, I have a funny story. So my... And, of course, you're athletic. You're very de- yeah. dedicated. I'm not so much anymore. But still, the right. the range is different. Totally. Yeah. yeah. I mean, it's, it's like so a, huge. Sh- a huge shift in the way you look and the way you feel and how it's perceived and so on and so mm-hmm. forth. But sometimes people do have, and that's part of the talk today, is sometimes people do have the mindset of they feel as old as they are. That's what it is. It's mindset, yeah, right? Yeah. And, that, and that's the difference, I think, between people who are struggling with those things versus not. Yep. Um, so, so I had a, a, a funny, so I was telling my, I'll call well, so she's not my biological niece, but she's essentially my niece. And, um, she was with me yesterday and we were out and about doing some things and, and she didn't realize that I was turning the same age as her mother, oh. Kristen, who I'm talking about. Yeah. And long story short, her commentary was after some, you know, like mouth drops and oh my gosh, and, you know, some teenage lingo because she's 14. She looked at me and said, it's okay, you still have time. (laughs) (laughs) So that was, you know, one could take that very poorly, but I just giggled because she didn't didn't realize that, you know, we were the age we were. I don't think it registered because of her age. And then all of a sudden she's like, Oh, and her mind went to the death. Yeah. <laughs> right to, God, you're so close to death. And you've <laughs> still got time. Don't worry. But it was so cute. And if I was anybody but me, I'm sure it would have been like, oh, my God, so offensive. But it was so funny. So I was laughing. Because the perception. So it's the mindset. Yeah. And I and I, I wanted to keep talking with her yesterday to get more little goodies out yeah. of her to be like, oh, so how, what do you think of that? And so she she had some good thoughts on that, you know, young people, younger, yep. younger don't think about age in the same way older people do. And, you know, the misnomer in psychology is that older people, you know, basically after you hit 40, start thinking, people think that you start thinking about death more. But we don't. No. I did that. We did that when we were 14 and 15 and 16. That's really common. That's a really common theme in my practice with teenagers is, you know, is is the world real? You know, yeah. are we, you know, is there anything bigger than us? Are, is there really a God? Are we going to die? How do we die? Where's that? You know, that's a really common thing. But by the time you get into your forties, thir- late thirties, forties, fifties and sixties and seventies, the conversations shift very, very dramatically for the most part, because people are usually either trying to find themselves, what their legacy has been, what they can continue to do for their community. They shift from the I to the we and mm-hmm. the bigger picture. Yep. So that's usually a healthier progress. So usually when people are in their 40s and 50s and 60s and going into retirement age, they're much more inclined to just be like, this is my happiness planning. I've done these things. I'm going to continue to do these things. Whereas kids think, oh my gosh, I, I, I could die. And there's going to yep. be death and it's imminent. So there's a very... Um, common misconception about that that I often address with people about oh you know I'm I'm so worried about dying but it's like well when you get to be 30 40 50 you don't start thinking about that you right. think about whoa many other things like it's gonna... funny because the teenage um questions and thoughts are self-oriented yeah and then as you get older especially starting with my generation and going forward we become more self-oriented Right. Because uh, it, and, but it, with us, it's more about self care. It's more about, it's more about I've got X amount of time. I want it to be good. I right. want to be healthy. I want to right. be happy. I want right. to be, you know. Right. So you, so yeah, the early years is run amok, run amok, and don't worry about it and yeah. tap yourself out. And then all of a sudden it's, wait a second. Yeah. <laughs> Let's be healthier. Let's do the right thing. So absolutely. So, yeah. and so, and it comes back to the beginning of I what I was saying. Death. I don't fear death. I, I don't fear death. I fear, you know, bedridden. I fig- I fear. Being alone, so those okay. So the top that quality are, of life at the end, I fear that. Right. So, so there's a couple top reasons of what people don't like about aging, mm-hmm. and that's one is you know not fear of death necessarily, which that happens obviously because sure. there are some people that are not. Well, nobody's that. looking forward to it. Right, yeah. but it's more about like what you were just saying. What is my legacy? How do I keep myself going? Will I be alone? Will I be in good health? Um, but I'd be in a facility for the last well, year. Or, or, no, no. I know, I know, but it's yeah. true. It's yeah. true. And well, and I have a couple of clients that have their family members currently. They're in rehabs or assisted livings, and uh, you know the stories. And I went through this with my my grandfather back in two thousand eleven, twelve. I was 
running back and forth to Florida trying to help him because he had gotten really sick and mm-hmm. he wasn't doing well. And I had to move him from the house to the assisted living and uh, just the transition and the lack of the lack of independence and what he felt and how that transitioned and how hard my mother had an injury a couple injuries it's an interesting story by the way uh but she ended up at the point where she was told she wasn't going home right and she was going to be in a facility she was dead two weeks later yep i mean she just just checked out right yeah. So, 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 well, I, we're not there yet, but yes, those yeah. are, <laughs> well, yeah. I, but we're, but what happens is, and, and this is what I do in my practice with people who are retiring. Like I have someone that's coming into oh, retirement yeah. in, in about four years. We're planning now for hobbies, activities, travel, getting them all set up and already starting to integrate all that stuff in there because many people are workaholics. Many people don't find the time to do that. And as soon as they retire, what happens by and large when yeah. people hit the retirement age that, you know, unless they retire at 45, 50, because they can, by the time they hit that, they, they don't know what to do with themselves. Yeah. And it becomes a very quick halt and slam into a wall of, oh my gosh. So it's always an encouragement to say, when you're in your 40s, even before that, but when you hit your 40s, you should be planning on what do you want in the next 20, 25 years? What is the, do you want to travel? Do you want to have hobbies? Because if you're going to be home alone or you're going to be home with your significant other or you, you know, whatever it is, are you going to keep the same house? Are you going to downsize? Are you going to upgrade? Yeah. Are you going to move to the coast? Are you going to move down south? Or, like all these things. And people, what they do is wait right to the end and, and then yeah. they go, I, you know, and the question always is, is retirement. What are you going to do? And people are like, I don't know. I'll figure it out when I'm, when I'm retired. You should be starting this when you and send your first kid to college. Problem. Right. Well, that would be wonderful, but when, people when typically don't do that. When you hug your kid, good, your first kid goodbye for college, you got to start thinking about what life's going right. to be life when after the kids. Yeah. It's like, what are you going to do? Right. Yeah. Um, but most people don't do that. So mm-hmm. by the time I usually hear the first parts of this, other than people planning for money retirement, which is, you know, 30s sure. sometimes, the 40s and 50s is when I get a lot of people saying, what am I going to do? And I'm only, you know, I'm 10 years away, I'm five years away, and now what am I going to do? And people are really, um, they get really panicked about that. Yeah. Now, in my job, I feel like I'm going to do this until <laughs> I'm dead, because I could talk yeah. to people forever. And, you know, and I can be anywhere and anywhere at all times. And, and given COVID, now I don't ever have to, you know, there's no more snow days for me because yeah, now right. yeah. when I used to get a snow day, there'd be no work because I wouldn't be able to get into the office and no one really, uh, occasionally I would do a telephone call, which would be fine here and yeah. there. But now. We're talking about that for kids too. I'm, no more snow days. I'm, yeah. There's no more snow days for mm-hmm. me. It's like I, you know, I can Zoom, I can Skype, I can do all the things. And so I could do my job until I'm dead. Yeah. I, I joke about it all the time. I say, I'm going to work up till noon on the day of my death. Right. Because, because A financially but b i write and i do this and i can do this and i enjoy it and i i can you know there's no reason i can't do it exactly well that's and that's the thing with mine it's not like it's a you know a physical taxing right. thing other than the fact i sit too long um <laughs> yeah which is a big problem um which actually takes away from your lifespan so i have to actively constantly be moving um but I, this is the benefit of our job is that we can do this forever um and from anywhere yep so um, but most people don't have that. And so here's, so here's an interesting factor because lots of people were asking me about this last week. Um, and, and I have other friends that are having birthdays is that it's roughly 50%. It's actually 49.7% of people on average mm-hmm. daily are thinking about the past and the future and not in the present. 49.7%. Oh, no. percent. That's low. That's in my experience. Well, like as an average, like as a daily, like uh, so you're taking. So it's not like there's yeah. s- certainly more people on a daily basis, I think, you know, thinking about that. But I think not on a daily, but, you know, if you take all people that say I do it every day. Yeah. I think that 50 percent, that's pretty good. But I think on a daily okay. basis across the board, if we didn't do all the little factors that, you know, you have to take the confounding factors out. I think most people think about the past and our future and past oriented, not the present. Okay, Absolutely. let me add a third place to that okay. option list other yes. than being present. There yes. are people living in the past. There are people who are in the past in the moment. Yes. They're in the future in the moment or they're elsewhere. They're on social media. They're just, you know, well, they're you're sitting with a bunch of people and you're going through Facebook or Instagram, you're not there. You're right. not well, present. You're, you're somewhere else. Well, you're fantasizing. You're out yeah. in dream world, right? Yeah. So, right. Um, so the percentage of people who live in the present. Very few. Very low. Right. Very yeah. few. 
but I was just giving the average statistic yep. of people like, you know, that would report that. Right. So yep. yeah, I think it absolutely is higher. Um, but it's just that it's, it's mind blowing that, you, you know, people are about mindfulness and being in the moment and all this, and they know all the rhetoric. But in fact, when you sit down and talk to people, and I know this from my own practice is most people are in the past yep. or are worried about what ifs, what will be, what could be, what might be, what hasn't happened yet, but will ha- in, in, and that's what ends up being, <coughs> excuse me, people stuck in those negative mindsets. Yep. So when they come up to their birthdays every year or they come up to something that's really um, intense about their life and their legacies and all that stuff, um, then they get stuck because they're either reminiscing about what was. Yep. I just actually had this conversation. He's probably not listening. Oh, by the way that whole cookie Oreo thing last week and I outed John. He was laughing so hard about that. So I'm going to, I'm going <laughs> to out him yesterday. Yesterday I, I'm going to out him again. Yeah. So yesterday we were having a conversation about this and I was saying to him that I've noticed more because he's getting older. I've noticed more and more that he reminisces more yeah. and he's older than me. So he was, and I said, did you notice that you do that? Now I'm heightened about it. Cause I've been, I always think about this stuff and, and so for, and probably the past 24 hours, he's caught himself at least really? a dozen times going. And I was like, you were about to go in the past. He goes, yeah. He yeah. Was, so we were like going through um, Dunkin' Donuts drive through this morning. And he was going to tell me a story about something that happened on a submarine because he saw something that was gray. And he started going yep. with the story. And I just looked at him and he was like, I'm doing it again, huh? <laughs> <laughs> That's that's number two. We talk about this. I talk about this all the time. The most important thing from a mental standpoint, I think, is understanding the observer position. Yes. Getting away from your mind. The second most important thing is learning how to live in the moment. And people aren't doing it and they don't even realize it. No. Well, so. So this is and the that's, other. And that's the help with anxiety. That's one of the biggest tools right. against anxiety. Right. Is And it, it well, gives you that sense of control mm-hmm. and that loose you know, air quotey kind of thing. It, it gives it, and it's. And I don't it's think a, it's that loose. I think it's, well, sometimes, yeah. well, sometimes it just depends on how far, because some people's mindsets on that go off the rails. Yeah. So, but, but it's interesting because I, you know, I was trying to think, oh, how many people do I know that go and use the further back stuff versus the further forward stuff um, in terms of balancing their anxiety, and I, it's probably a split difference of half mm-hmm. and half. But, yeah. um, but it's, it's about it's about having that sense of. I fear the forward, so therefore whatever's out in the world in front of me, if I control for all of that in my head and what could happen, what might happen, I mean, that, I mean, we plan, obviously, financial planning, yep. uh, you know, retirement planning, you know, kids planning, all those things, but at the end of the day, they're all the externals again, yep. and it's not the internal of what about right now, how are you taking care of yourself, you know, that, you know, it's kind of like what we talk about about food and what I've been saying, like what you, what you eat Mm-hmm. either feeds your unhealthy disease side or it feeds right. your healthy side. So what you're doing now, not what you're doing in four weeks from now, is what is going to end up being 20 years from now. And people are thinking, well, in 20 years I'll do it, in 10 years or next year I'll do it. Or It's like, well, today is important because it buys you more time in the future yep. to do the things that you might want to do. But people get so consumed with the worry or the concern of, well, what if I don't do this, and what if I don't do that? And that ages you. Isn't it true that most of this conversation about the future in particular, yes. I and mean, we can talk about the past, there are other issues with the past, that's mostly um, the past. Thinking about the past is usually shoveling off responsibility. Mm-hmm. Thinking about the future is mostly because this is where we are instinctively and primarily. Most thoughts about the future are threat generation. Yes. It's, it's almost exclusively threat generation. Well, you're... Your mind is telling you there's a bear in the back of the cave, whether right. it be you're going to run out of money, you're going to get sick, you're going to, you know, all the things. But we... that's fueled. So to, to yeah. add to it, that's actually fueled by the fear of the past because okay. people yep. are usually sitting in the past of what they know, of what they've anticipated because right. they've had some experience in it. So people typically project out and what happens. Oh, my uncle was in a home for two years before he died. I don't want to have that. Yeah. So right. That comes from... so, yeah. The, so what happens is people become unconscious of the habit of doing the past rhetoric narrative, whatever right. it is, like you did that little piece you just said, there's so many of those narratives that they continue to act out on them in the forward because they become the habit. And so when someone sits in front of me and I say, well, what do you think? And I often get, Oh, I don't know. I don't think about it. Yeah. And when, you know, yep. it's that. And then I say, well, actually you do. 
which I always get the, and I always, and I'm using the words always and never real time because I always get, no, (laughs) no, I don't (laughs) like, no, but you do. And we do the back and forth and, and then I give an example or two and then all of a sudden it's, oh, I do do that. Or I didn't think of it that way. And now I realize I do. So because the habit of bringing forward the threat generation from the past to create the anticipatory anxiety of what might happen, what could happen. Right. All that just sits in and everybody does it. Sure. Everybody does it. And it's just a matter of how aware. It's a survival technique. Yeah. It, it's wired into us. Yes. And now it's interesting because is it wired into us because it's socially wired into us after we're born? Or is it hardwired into us? And I'm going to say it's both because yeah. we have a survival um, technique anyway. It's but then wi- it's hardwired into us and it's amplified socially. Social, right, yeah. exactly. Yeah. So, so, and then we're socially normed around what aging means, you know, financially, uh, emotionally, relationally, uh, fi- familially, job-wise, all those things. Right. And then we have these narratives that get in our way that we're not where we're supposed to be. We're not where we want to be. We're disappointed or we're very elated with ourselves. Depends on where you are on the continuum. Yep. But in, in my line of work, I don't get to see initially the people that are elated. I help them get there, but it's usually they're stuck with the mindset of the narrow, very short-sighted, I'm fear-based, yep. I don't know what to do, and I'm right. aging and I'm dying. And, yep. you know, I had one client one time tell me, and I'll never forget this because I use this occasionally in my head when I'm teaching. I'll say, oh, my client told me that we, you know, we live, we live our death date once a year. Morbid thought, but nonetheless, and they weren't saying it as a negative. They were saying it as like they live in the present because they know that any day could be something. Oh, that, I see. No, yep. right. But yep. initially you go to right to gosh, that's so morbid. That's so terrible. That's so awful. And it is if you're in that mindset, but it's also, this person was coming from, I, I know that my death date, I live it every year. I just don't know when it is. So I have to make sure that every day I live in the moment to the fullest. And they, they went on to always say, and they were very healthy about this. They were, you know, they, they struggle. Their struggle is to remain aware of the present. So not getting stuck between the toggle between what they had happened and what was coming and so most days were good, but then there were those days that the the morbid side of that statement yep. would come out. And then, um, but I found that interesting because they had a great perspective on it. But when you first hear it, you're like, ew. I was thinking that's how it explains why I'm not a big fan of my birthday and I hate New Year's Eve and New Year's Day. Oh. Because that's just clicking, count, it's just clicking the calendar, right? Oh. It's so, just, you know. It, well, it, yeah. It, it brings, I mean, it, it <coughs> drags mortality back into your, your frame of you know, your field of view. Right. Well, yeah. well exactly. Well, it, it does. And so that's what happens for a lot of people. Yeah. And so because of my birthday this year coming and my friend, and we were talking about, I gave her perspective the other night when we were out. I said, I said, well, actually you're one year older than you actually are. And she, that did not go over well, right. by the way, that was not happy. <laughs> and, I, and I said, well, t- there's many cultures who actually consider the first 10 months of gestation when you're first born, your first year. Yep. So you're actually, we're already past that birthday. Right. And uh, and she, she kind of looked at me like, and then it, it registered like, oh, that's a win. And then she realized that that made her older. Yeah. <laughs> I was trying to give her some perspective to be like, you're actually, it's fine. You're past that point when we can move forward. Yeah, well. But hopefully on those milestones, you wake up the next day and you realize nothing changed. Well, it didn't, well, ch- it didn't change it's, it's anything. Just, it's yeah. just a roll of the clock. It's yeah. just a roll of the, the calendar. It doesn't mean, that's why, you know, last week when people were like, oh, or even I'm sure I'll get a few this week that you're how old? And it, it's like, and then I get, you don't look that old. Yeah. You don't seem that old. You don't act that old. You don't, right? And that's like, well, because I don't feel that way. Yeah. It doesn't even register. Now, do I do reviews in my head? I've been doing that since I was 30. Um, it, it probably for me, even earlier, the, hence the 27th birthday yeah. was a great year. Sure. Um, and But I think most people do that. They do that review, review, review. And it's, then it's at the end of the day, okay, now, what, I mean, if you sit in your, and you ruminate about it all day for the next year, and then you, you're you planning ahead for what's coming that's bad or yeah. how you haven't done what you wanted to do and all these things, you get stuck in that, um, yeah. the stagnant, uh, you know, um, dormancy space because it gets you paralyzed and yep. then you're really stuck because you're not feeling like you're contributing. So always forward, moving forward, moving forward, moving. And I even get people who are like, why would you start something new now? Why would you want, I'm like, well, why not? You know, yeah, what? that's an odd question. I, oh, 
Well, you know what I do for a living, right? Yeah. (laughs) So I get a lot of odd questions and I get a lot of odd commentaries. Uh, It's literally, it's a joke, but that's literally the answer to that is why wouldn't I? Well, right. (laughs) uh, Well, that's, and that's my answer is why wouldn't I? What, what would be the reason for me not? You know, I, and well, and the answer comes back typically of, well, but you're getting older. Don't you want to just like retire and just chill out? And I'm like, okay, no, because I'm a long way from an age that I would retire because I'm not that old. And second of all, as we talked, I'm not in a job where I need to retire. And also, um, no, because I want to keep going forward and doing things and having excitement and you know, imparting more and doing more and giving well, more. And yeah. if you if you worked at Weston Electric, that might be a, you know, that might be a well, palatable was, option to retire and get out of it. Right. If I but, was a coal but, miner. Yeah. Yeah. I would retire. But neither of us are doing things that we hate. Exactly. We're not digging ditches for a living. Exactly. And and still, if you are digging ditches and you are whatever. Th- you See, it, to me, hell is the other way around. Hell is sitting home watching, you know, Ryan's Hope or whatever the hell is soap oh opera is. Wow. <laughs> that just, that totally just dated you for yeah. sure. Ryan's Hope. Is it still on? I don't know. No, it's okay. not. But that was so great back in the day as a little sidebar. It was on. I noon. was into it because it I saw the noon. first episode. I knew the, you know, so I was in from the beginning, unlike all the other ones. So. It was on at noon. Yeah. I remember mm-hmm. back in the day. Yeah. <laughs> Ryan's Hope. And then at three o'clock was General Hospital. Yep. And all my children came on after Ryan's Hope. Oh, but uh, I don't have to worry about it because, again, financially. But, but on the other hand, I don't look forward to just sitting home and doing nothing. Right. But some people will tell you mm-hmm. they, that they do. But that's not really true because yeah. when they first experience it, and I can't, I'm sure I could probably think of one example, but it would probably be a lie. <laughs> Listen, you, you have yeah, money, you I have resources, any, you any. don't have worries. That's one thing. You know, you can travel, you can do that kind of thing. But, but yeah, I, I mean, I was going to say, I don't have any clients or any personal experiences with anyone that has said after they've sat home that this was a good thing. Really? Yeah. Like, that they, you know, after a period of time, they're like, okay, now what? Cause, and how many times have you known people that were going to retirement and you're thinking, they're not going to last long after oh. retirement because... Well, yeah. so the, uh, many times. And, yeah. and you can sort of see it coming because you know there's predictable factors that will make it so Mm -hmm. um and you know obviously health people that have health factors that you can see you know like diabetes heart disease um or the combination of a a trifecta of things you know that kind of obesity um uh lack of exercise poor eating habits you you just see the setup because as soon as the adrenaline drops from having a purpose of being able to go to work every yeah. day the life expectancy drops so i mean there's so much research on aging and psychology of aging i had a great um professor at umass amherst many years ago and i think she's still there susan cross whitborn who's done amazing research and and on on aging and what happens to men and women when they're retiring, when they're when they lose a spouse or when they lose their partners or when they lose friendships and what happens to the the mind yeah. and the whole being as you know. So when people, you know, when people lose their spouses, for instance, or their partners in life, women will out if a woman loses her male partner, they usually yes. flourish another 10, 12 plus years or more, depending on the age, men typically live a year Yeah. if they lose it after a long-term relationship or they jump into, and I get this all the time, how can my father remarry in a year? Well, because yeah. it's a protective factor yep. of their of his whole life because he loses his whole span of life over time if he has that loss. I was going to be sexist about it and say that men particularly need a purpose. They need a reason to get up in the morning. They don't float around really well. And I, I'm not just saying that women do, but women have naturally have get resupplied purpose. In other words, the kids grow up and they move out. And the kids have families and then there's grandkids. And that's a purpose for, you know. So, so yes. So and again, I'm, yes I know I'm and, getting sexist. Yes, and, but, no, yes yeah. and no, because I'm going to be like, oh, I have a few listeners that are like, Kim, but I don't let that one go. Yeah. So um, No, by all means, have at it. But, I'm not, but men are, men are purposely, so, purpose-oriented. So, they need to produce. Hard, hardwired, mm-hmm. women tend to be nurturers, and so there's always nurturing roles, yeah. to your point. And men tend to be task, right? You know, yes. hunter gathered versus nurture, right? Mm-hmm. So, so that in genetic coding, sure. Now the trends, yeah, have changed, softened you know, considerably. Yeah, you know, so there's so women, you know, have 
purpose has changed. There's always been a purpose, but the purpose because yep. the role change has changed. Men's roles and purpose have changed too. So there's, you know, there's a less emphasis completely on the workaholic mode as being like, you know, right. go out and be the breadwinner and come home where, you know, so there's a blending of that. There's a blending trend right. of all of that because the purpose, but I think that across the board um, that there's a purpose that everyone has to have a purpose, period, because the whole nature yes. of, of psychology, of survival to your best self, is that if you don't have a purpose, that's where everyone, everyone ends up falling down on it. Right. Is that the lack of purpose demotivates you to the paralysis point, and then you're stuck, and that's it. Right. And that's when people get really severely depressed. People get, um, you know, they can't get motivated to do things, or they let themselves go, or, you know, I could name sure. a million different yeah. things that happen. So having a sense of purpose to the point of as you're aging and you're going birthday to birthday to birthday is good to do a life review of, like, what's my next year's purpose? Uh, you know, every year I always say this year will be better than the last. Yeah. And then that's very broad. Yeah. And then in my own books and journals and things, I always say, in what ways? And they're always tangible. Like, how will I measure it? It's not just, it's going to be better. It's just a feeling. Yeah. <laughs> because people will say that, and it's kind of making the resolution thing. After 20, yeah, 20 days exactly. in, yeah. we're out of the, you know, You're so done, it's, yeah. it's like, it will just be better. In what way? Will it be more financially sound? Will you have traveled more? Will you have, you know, created a new job for yourself? You know, you know, last, like for me last year, I added in those two new projects, those big projects that I'm working on. Yep. And, it, it, and the, it's, yeah. Something now new. you yep. just build on those things. Yep. And so it's, it's exciting. And without the purpose, you don't have the excitement, which keeps you young and keeps you motivated to eat right and do things yep. and you know and people have said um yeah but covid's really killed the year covid has gotten in the way here but that doesn't stop you 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 can still exercise you can still make good choices you yep. can still eat like you know we the big topic on tv in the past week for like covid around kids has been about you know kids are sitting home aging while not really getting anywhere because they feel a lack of connection right. and lack of purpose. Yep. I mean, it's kind of, I was thinking about it akin to as you get older and you, you yeah. start getting disconnected, you don't have the same sense of purpose. It's like, oh, it's the You've same You've been kind pulled of out of your circle. You've been pulled out of your you, world. Right, so really. you don't have the same, yep. same access points. So you have to create them, and it's the same exact thing. So the same advice I'm giving to parents with their kids, like, hey, you got to create some access points for them. You got to, you can't just sit around and, you know, do the same thing every day, get up, have breakfast, go to school, uh, go from the bedroom to the couch to the, right. you know, what, whatever the the plan is. And then, then that's it. And then think, okay, this is going to get better. You still have to be able to go outside, take a drive. Go, I mean, there's plenty yep. of things to do. Yep. And, but people get in the mindset, again, mindset of I'm stuck Yeah. as life passes you by. And so when life feels like it's passing you by, you got to jump on it. Yeah, that's externalizing. That's COVID has killed the year. Right. Exactly. COVID exists. Right. You still have some determination on what you do with it. So it's the it's the phrase I've I have even on my website for the past twenty years is um, you have to function despite dysfunction. Yeah. There's always dysfunction around you. Oh God. There'll yeah. always be a reason. There'll always be an excuse for why you can't do something in the future or why you can't do something today, and if you buy into it, that's what's going to happen. And so now, can everyone fall into that? Sure. I have little moments here and there, of course, because we all do. But you have to immediately grab them and be like, that's not going to do me any good. Yeah. You know? It's where you are in the car, right? Yeah. If you're in the car, you don't jump into the back seat and hide, right? <laughs> no, Keep be... your hands on the wheel, right? As much well. as you can. And obviously, you can't control everything that's out in front of you in the car and what everyone else does. But you don't cede all the control that you have. You exactly. try to maximize all the control that you have. Exactly. So, and, and that's and people often feel that they don't have that control. They don't see themselves in the driver's seat. They don't see themselves. Well, because that gives them responsibility, right. which they tend to avoid. Responsibility and accountability is exceptionally right. hard for, for, and and when you, so here's another piece of birthdays and aging is that people say you can't teach an old dog new tricks. You can always teach someone anything yes. if they're wanting to learn it. So if someone comes to me and they're 75, which I have several clients that are 75 and above, they're there not because they have to be. They choose to be because they want something different. Yeah. And they're not looking at it like, oh, my God, I'm close to death in 20, 30 years. I'm actually, I want something different because they're open to it. Whereas 
they have counterparts that they talk about in sessions with them that, you know, they're sitting home, you know, eating, yep. drinking, yep. doing these things, waiting for death. Yeah. Um, because they're... Complaining about everything that's going on around well, them. Right. Yep. Yeah. And then, you know, it's like every ailment, past remedy. Oh, and the, the common theme of the conversations is bodily functions and did you know that Sally died? Did you know that Bob from 20, yeah. you know, 20 Downey Street, he died yesterday? Yeah. And, all my, and that's because the the focus is so small yeah. that they're not thinking beyond themselves and that comes from planning way ahead of time that they could have been doing and maybe a lot of people have trouble living in the present because they've diminished their present so much yes that there's no place to sit right yeah. and that's i think that's a really good way of putting it because people don't realize how important today is yeah and tomorrow versus next week and next year you know, kind of goes back to in the beginning when I was like, oh, I'm supposed to be in Greece. Yeah. I'm supposed to be in <laughs> Hawaii. And then, well, I adjusted. Yeah. Because I still wanted to make it so that I felt like it was good for me. And that's okay. I mean, yeah. you, you can choose to um, ruminate over that for months and let it ruin the next, you know, couple of weeks because you didn't get to go to Greece. I mean, so that's okay. I'll get there. Ne I'll get there next time or I'll do something good here. And then there'll right. be another well, opportunity. Greece will always be there. Itself. Well, yeah. Okay. <laughs> well, we never know, you know, yeah. it could fall into the ocean yeah. or something, but, um, but yeah, so it's, it's perspective is like, well, okay, well, I, that couldn't work. So you'd be flexible around it. You, you move the, you move the thought process and, and that's really hard for people that, well, yeah. you know, yeah, but I wanted to do that. And people have said to me like, oh, aren't you so disappointed? I'm like, yeah, but I'm going to go. It's just not today. Yep. <laughs> I'm just not going today. Uh, the, uh, you know, these little meme golf tech tips anxiety is about um relitigating the past or worrying about the future right so the less time you spend doing that the more peaceful you are right and it doesn't mean you give up plans it doesn't mean everyone's got a plan for what's going forward there's got to be a few steps but you just can't live in fear of all the things that you live in fear of well and that goes, goes to, back to your three r's well it goes back to my three r's and mm -hmm. also goes back to people don't like change and being comfortable and sitting with the uh, of change is that Change is, is scary for a lot of people. Most people are afraid of it, but yep. it's getting comfortable with change isn't bad. Change is sometimes really good, and it's okay if something changes that you can go with that. Sometimes it's better. That's a tough lesson for me. It, <laughs> see, well, but you I fall into the change. camp of most people, yep. which is the norm, which is fine. It's a matter of them being able to f sit with the uncomfortability of change and be like, you know, it's okay that those plans change, or it's okay that yep. this happened. Because what's, at the end of the day, did anyone die? likely not did anything bad happen likely not and did it really make like the day awful probably not yeah so but it, that's not what people think about in the moment you ruminate and right in the moment on right. oh my gosh this is awful this is what happened oh my gosh oh my gosh oh my gosh it was terrible and what it means and the meaning of it and and whatever you conjure up is the meaning which doesn't usually have any of the three r's in it yeah <laughs> <laughs> it's the sticking points right so yep. um so so for birthdays, for people who are, you know, getting older, yes. um, people are very much about having little tips to move forward in them. And, and it's really it's really about have a little purpose, make plans for yourself that are reasonable within a time frame, and, you know, and find something, you know, good for yourself. Don't externalize. Right. Um, you know, like you, just, I was going to go back to what you said a few minutes ago about um, that you hate you hate your birthday. Is that what you said, or you don't like no, your? Birthday? I don't. I diminish my birthday. I don't. It's not something I hate. New Year's. Okay, so you I hate the turning of the calendar. So, so the so diminishing of your birthday is common. It's a yeah. common experience for a variety of reasons that I'm sure you share with the people that sh share them with me. And, mm -hmm. um, and and I grew up with people who were very sad around their birthday and i grew up also having a lot of times people being sad yeah um because my birthday falls in a time um where there was some deaths around my family oh, yeah. at times when i was little and so they got associated in with my my birthday time of year and so i've had you know you have those pieces and you you know we talk about you know your own personal stuff of like your own mental state of that but right. i bring this up as a personal example that there's often those pieces that make birthdays harder or New Year's harder or holiday something that is about them because sure. there's an association to them. So I've had to constantly fight 
cognitive behaviorally until, you know, not till now, but for yep. many years to get out of that pattern of there was a training around it. The people around me were always, you know, oh, it's her birthday, but this also happened. So that was always an override. Oh, and, I see. And yeah. it was a bypass over it that my birthday existed, but it was always yeah. But two days before, this is what happened 20 years before. Or, you yeah. know, something. Ha so it's always in my head going, well, that's not me. That's not my issue. That's not yeah. who I, you know, it's my birthday. Right. And so, you know, but that takes yeah. work. They're not and associated. That's, they, and know. that's what I find yeah. a lot of people have as stories for themselves is that somehow their birthday or something about like they're getting older was diminished by an associated factor mm -hmm. that was put upon them and then they owned it. Yep. And it just you just don't have to be part of that and many years ago i decided that when i was of age to start going and doing things like traveling to florida to see my grandmother on my birthday and getting away and doing those things it made it much easier because i took charge of other mm. people yeah i took charge of other people's impact on me getting you, diminished because they had issues you rewrote the atmosphere around right it. Yeah. right and that makes a big big difference so you have to really examine your own your own um Participation mindset. Yeah, and yeah, mindset, yeah, exactly. your participation in your mindset and what's being set for you so that you don't take that over and over and over into year after year after year. Um, An ongoing theme. We see yeah. we seed control over our own lives so exactly. much. You know, exactly. and just throw them to the winds of the outside influences. Right. And, and, it's, and it's similar. And, and I think it's so important that when people think of it, you know, like when someone has a loss, like a death. And it becomes, you know, the grieving process and it goes on for years and years and years and, and for people. And I, like my grandmother died back in 2003 and and every year on her death date, mm -hmm. I do like a celebration in my head and I do yeah. little things. And, and people are like, oh, isn't it sad? And I'm like, well, first of all, it was 2003. Yeah. And, and second of all, yeah, but I don't hold that as the mem I hold these. What would my grandmother want for me? How would this want to how would she want me to feel? And I have this. All day long of yay. Why and, sum up your grandmother's life into the loss of her right. as opposed to the, the other parts of it? Right. And people, but people like to sit in the negative, the sadness. Oh, I can't do that. It's going to be so miserable. Oh, it was, you know, it, oh, I can't ever do that because that would be so disrespectful. And like, and not, my question always is, would your grandmother or would your whoever, would they want you to be what upset? they want, yeah, exactly. And they're like, no, but oh my gosh, it's so devastating. And yes, but... You have so many options to you to be able to celebrate. So it's similar to when people say, oh, my birthday was hard. Yep. My birthday is a hard time of year, and you find out why. And, you know, either my types of reasons, your types of reasons. Yep. You know, there's some stories about things that have happened to people around their birthdays that you're like, well, I can see why. And then you have to generate the alternative mindset to go, yeah, but that was then, past, Yep. It's not coming in the future, and why relive that over and over again? Because it's not about what it is now. Right. And and people just have a really hard time letting go because that requires change, accountability that you actually have the ability to make a move yourself yep. on it because you're not having it happen to you. You're doing it right. yourself. It's externally. Everyone wants because, again, if everything's happened to you externally, you have no responsibility over it. Exactly. And you have... There's nothing you can do about it, right? Right. Well, I can you the victim. say, I, my whole birthday's ruined because I couldn't go to Greece because of COVID. Yeah. And I could be sad. Yeah. And what? That's a waste because it's like, well, I'm going to go to Greece. I'm just not going today. <laughs> so what are you going to do? Spend all the time before you go to Greece and waste all that time grieving about not going to Greece? Exactly. It doesn't make any sense. Exactly. Yeah. Well, and, well, and I have not Greece, but I have other clients who've had similar things happen over sure. the year. And then their their thing is... Oh, you know, and they're now I'm never gonna go. Like, why? Well, because it was my birthday, or it was my blah blah blah. It was my anniversary, and I'm like, yeah, but you can still go. And yeah. You just call that when you go your anniversary or your birthday, or but people don't. It's like so concrete that they're stuck to that. Well, yeah, but it's not the same. You know, it's like people who have to celebrate Christmas on Christmas because it doesn't count if you don't. Right. Yeah. Like, you know. You know, and I was, and and that's the thing about birthdays. And going back to my grandmother it was like, oh, I go to my grandmother's house and I be with her on my birthday for many years in a row when I was like in my twenties, and you yeah. know, and you know, and parts of my family would be like, oh, well, we'll celebrate your birthday whenever then because you weren't here for it. But this is the okay. part. This is the part of externalizing <laughs> that um, comes back to being okay with yourself. Exactly. In other words, because people put themselves in the position, if I don't make this trip, right. nothing's okay. Right. 
Well, the fact of the matter is everything's pretty good, okay. Yeah. If you get to make the trip, great. But, you know, fine. We'll have fun here. We'll do, do something other else. Yeah. Exactly. And it's always about um, nothing is worthwhile without the desire, whatever it is, or that, what, what the need is, what the next thing is. Exactly. That kind of constant dissatisfaction. And that's just a recipe. That I'll well, just eat you alive. Well, and I think because the culture is so instant gratification oriented yeah. now, is that even makes it harder and, you know, I didn't get raised in that environment, and no. I didn't get raised in that era. And those Huge people eater. who go to the Greece trip, a week after they come back, they're looking for the next, next trip. trip. right. Because those type, filling, your, filling yourself up with those types of needs and desires is ultimately dissatisfying because, exactly. first of all, as you keep doing it, the thrill becomes less and well, less. You become, yeah, because you're always looking for the next best thing. Right, but it's more routine the next time, and it's, exactly. you know, it, it doesn't, doesn't have the happen. same jolt to it. Exactly. You know, and it's just, it's self defeating. So it, what you have to do, you have to find peace in yourself and your your present and your world. Exactly. And then all this stuff has to be added value. So that gets to the point of sort of the whole topic is being able to sit with yourself and be okay with where you're at versus work on yourself. I'll make everybody in the roll their eyes. Work on yourself. Yes, <laughs> but in very specific ways. Yeah. And so and it's hard for people to work on themselves because they don't like hearing that. Yep. So, um, oh, speaking of birthdays. Um, Shirley's asking, when is my birthday? <laughs> it's Wednesday. Which is why we're here today. This is why we are doing the show today, because I won't be here. So, Shirley, my birthday's on Wednesday the 27th. <laughs> um, but thank you for asking. But so, that's that's the and that's the basis, not to take the general and go to the specific, but that's the basis of dealing with relationship grief. Yes. And, is that you got to have the next relationship or you can't function. And it's like, this is, this is why the advice is always work on yourself. You've got to be able to, you got to be happy with yourself on your own. And that's when, that's when the magic really happens. Right. And so it kind of ties into all the topics that we always talk about. And that, that's like the codependency yep. is, you know, um, teenagers, right? The, if I don't have the boyfriend, and I'm going to throw girls mostly under the bus because girls are very yeah. notorious for this because they're more codependently raised many times, is if I don't have this boyfriend, I have to have the... Like, I can't not be in a relationship. Right. And But adults are like that. And, well, be, and yeah. then they get to yeah. adulthood and the pattern continues because nothing was intervened on in the first place, but it actually goes way back to when they were five and six years old, both boys and girls at that point, to just be like the self-esteem... And the the sense of ego ability and sense of right. industriousness and self efficacy and self belief wasn't there, so they need to have someone there to reassure them that they're okay. When they don't, then they fall apart. The whole self image is based on I'm in a relationship with somebody. They think I'm okay. Well, right. that's nice, but you don't you're think not, you're okay. You don't think you're okay. Yeah. In order to feel okay, you feel like you need to be in a relationship, and it's a very vicious cycle which perpetuates and perpetuates, which goes to the point of like when people are their spouse passes away at 75 80 years old and they've been together for 50 years they've never had you ask people usually in those circumstances yep. like oh how they've never been with anybody else right. or they've had multiple relationships but then that was it and then that's it and there's no friendships there's no other things outside of that it right. makes it super hard but so. every behavior is every behavior is based on this people who shop when they're distressed people who travel when they're dis distressed you know, right. people who drink when they're distressed, right. you know, it's just well, because it's escaping the, the reality of their self-image. It's escaping the reality of this and, and to sit with the uncomfortability of themselves to connect with something else that fills their cup up mm -hmm. until it doesn't anymore. And then that's the pattern of addiction, Yeah, whether it's getting involved in relationships, shopping, yep. eating. You know, all the poor relationships we get into, by and large, often come back to a codependency and lack of ability to be yeah. with oneself. It's a dual diagnosis. All yeah. this stuff is a dual okay. diagnosis. Yes, and more and more and more you see it. Well, it's always been there. Yeah. But I think people are becoming much more conscious of it. And certainly I make it a point to put that out there because it's really a premise of having people understand who they are. Yeah. Is that if you don't understand where, you're, where you need to untangle yourself from your stuff, then you're not going to be able to sit successfully with the uncomfortability of being alone at times, not eating certain things overspending underspending right. whatever it is to have happiness or to be able to just deal with i'm getting a year older yeah and what does that mean and how does that mean i mean <laughs> mean to me you know for other people so i ask my husband all the time like so because he ages very gracefully in my opinion <laughs> and and he's you know we talk about that and he's like yeah 
I'm good. Everything's good. And he's got that, like, he's so comfortable with yeah. what has been. And he's not really worried so much about the future for, like, the things that may happen. He's right. more about, like, I'm good. Like, we just go with what's now. And we have plans and all this. But he's really good like that. Yeah. And to the point where I sort of liken him to my grandmother at times for, like, the emotional yummies. Because she was so much like that when <laughs> she was in her last, like, decade of life. Um, I would ask her, like, hey, Graham, you know, are you worried about dying or she'd always say no and i'd say why she goes i live not i lived i live a good life i have no reason to be so that sits with me so so i think that those kinds of messages i'm lucky to have them and maybe i sought them out and surrounded myself with people because you pull for what you want and what you know so for that really countered a lot for me in my own personal life to be able to then impart it to other people that you have to surround yourself with i live now i'm not sad yeah. because I'm deficited from what I haven't done versus what I have. I'm always like, oh, but I can still do that because I'm not dead. Yeah. <laughs> I'm not going to be dead. And I'm there, but I'm not perfect at it. Well, no, I, yeah. you, you still have your moments, but sure. I just got to a point where I was fed up with being at the mercy of the externals. Right. In other words, right. I never found what I was looking for in the externals. And I, so and, maybe it's time to find it internally. And I think that that's the process for most people yeah. because I think that's where I, and I'm not perfect at this process either because I have my moments. We have our days, yeah. Everybody has it, but I relate it back. So my grandmother must be on my mind today because I think that I wa- I can watch her go through that process too because I was young enough to watch the whole process of how she had a lot of external baggage that she was dealing with and how she internalized it. And once she freed herself, I can actually sort of visualize her freeing herself of, at times of knowing she made some moves, she made some disconnects from people, she knew some t- people that were taught. Like, I watched the process, yep. and I could see the happiness factor go up and up and up and up and up just because she finally came to be good with her. And I don't want to put this on parents because there's no, there's just no sense to doing it, but a lot of no. this comes from self-image that you take out of your childhood and right. constantly wanting, constantly... Um, lacking that self-image people complain about their parents and their upbringing and how they were to them but they're constantly trying to satisfy them too even after their parents are gone right well and that's the thing so so i've had this in the shows before i've said it you know it's always oh blame the parents in psychology but it's it's really not blame the parents it's the first six years of life and the exposure to all input that creates a sense of uh, integrity, ego integrity, your reality manager that creates your self-esteem. And that's influenced by, unless you're living with only one person, you never have any socialization. It's right. it's relatives, teachers, little friends, friends, parents, interactions in the TV world. Like it's all those pieces and whatever the messages are and the negative ones, wherever they come from, stick. You know, primarily they're often from immediate family members. But not always. But the point being is that there's, it's not a blame. It's a matter of understanding that there's ego fractures to the, to the self image Mm -hmm. right at the gate, right from the beginning of, you know, you build up shame, you build up guilt in a kid, you build up reasons why they can't do certain things. You take away their independence because you, it's faster for you to do it. Just little things you would never think. Yeah. Unmeaning. Um, and then all of a sudden you've got these issues later down the road in teenage and twenties and thirties. And then people have a hard time coping with themselves or understanding why they're stuck or feeling bad about themselves. It's because they have these fractures in their ego and their self-esteem by the time they're six or seven years old, they're set in place. Plus this built in trauma, this, yeah. this trauma that's not necess- that's not the result of bad parenting. Right. The whole separation aspect of childhood right. is traumatic. Very traumatic. And emotion. it can happen if you're three it, or four years old and another child comes along, that's yeah. more separation. It's inevitable. It's nobody's fault. Right. But it's still trauma. Right. Because it, it's a change in the attachment. It's a mm-hmm. change in the actual environment. It's a change in then how do you cope with it? It's a change in your, it? self, your self-image that's because right. you were the Who only are, child. Right. Yeah. And exactly. all of a sudden, there's someone else who's taking your parents' attention from Right. Them. Yeah. Exactly. And you see all those kinds of things. But it goes back to something else I said at the beginning of the show is that oftentimes we walk through life unaware because yeah. we're so habituated into doing things that we know. And then those are setting us up to become anticipatory for the future because here we are. You, that was a perfect example of like little kids setting, getting set up. There's another baby born into the environment. Now they've have an attachment, emotional trauma. Yep. And now going forward, there's likely going to be some relational issues if, if the parents aren't like on top of 
that particular thing, which many aren't because that's not the focus. Yeah. And it's not because they're bad. It's because... Plus, again, it can't all be mitigated. There's, that's right. There's, there's trauma. There's no it's just, perfect. There's, it's, it's, in, it's, it's internal. It's just right. part of the process. Right. Well, and there's no perfect. Even in a perfect so parenting situation. Exactly. Yeah. And you can't get through... <laughs> you can't get through life without getting into your 20s and needing therapy. <laughs> <laughs> Everybody needs therapy. That's why I always say it's, you know, it's therapy was always, you know, such a stigma to it because it's for crazy people and all that. And yeah. I, you know, I, I know what my clinical title is and all those things, but it's really, everyone needs a coach in their life to be able to run things by that doesn't have a judgment on it, that it's neutral, it gives good ideas and alternative generation. And that's really what it's about. It's not about having to dissect psychoanalytically like a Freudian psychoanalysis session yep. that that's what it is because then we don't have any forward movement that's the that's the wonderfulness of cognitive behavioral right. therapy and theory is really taking what you've got and you don't have to keep rehashing rehashing it's like staying present in the now and moving it forward and how do you get it to move so you're not sitting with Eeyore yeah well, we talked about it last <laughs> week. We talked about laying down the tracks, and the analogy right. is a good one, because the only way you get off the tracks is adding new input into your thought process. Mm -hmm. And often that's difficult, especially as you get into adulthood, where your entire world, your routines, your work situation, your home situation are so encapsulated, right. you rarely get extra input in there. Right, and so what you have to do is, and I have clients talk to me about this here and there, is that you, you have to add something new, something small, daily make yeah. a change daily like get up five minutes earlier you know change your routine a little bit like just basic things you know i have like a client that's trying to stop drinking and it's you know all or nothing all or nothing and he hadn't had any success and i said okay we're just gonna we're just gonna make it that normally you drink every night starting at six let's make it to seven yeah so in like the past yep. three or four months we've gone from that we probably did 10 different steps and now we're at two days of no drinking a week. Yep. And that was, that's huge. We're back to baby steps. And Exactly. But people are instant gratification. And yep. they, you know, if they failed today, they're going to fail tomorrow. So they throw up their hands and do the efforts and say, I'm done. And that's, and that's so discouraging. And that's kind of the thing about the aging process too. People are like, Oh, well I'm that age. So who cares? There, or, um, or like my lovely yeah. niece said, Oh, well you still have more time. <laughs> I still have. It's I okay. Told my girlfriend you still the other have day, more time. I told my girlfriend the other day we were talking about the dog, and I just offhandedly said it's a fifty-fifty shot whether I outlive the dog at this point. You understand that, right? And it's like she, it just stunned her, and I was saying it as a joke, but you know. Uh, but I challenge people. The whole living in the in the moment thing is being in the present is important, and I challenge people. There's uh, there's this guy. I think Jason Silver is his name. He's kind of a modern day philosopher type of thing, mm -hmm. and he he taught. He's very emotive. He's I think he's got an interesting psychological pattern himself, but um, he talks about flow moments, and I challenge yeah. everybody to think about the moments when they were most happy. Yes. And if you think about the moments when you're mo most happy, pull one up in your mind. Yep. It's going to be because all the noise of everything else went away at that moment. Yes. And you were there. Yes. You were just enjoying that. Whatever that moment is, you're thinking of it now. It was because you weren't worried about anything in the past. That's you weren't right. worried about anything in the future. You were just there. Right. The more you can get in that moment, the happier you're going to be, right. and you do it in baby steps. Exactly. You say, I'm not going to worry about this for the next two hours. Right. I mean, God, even if it's playing video games or even if it's watching a movie, right. for two hours, I'm just not going to worry, worry about, about this. Worry about it. Yeah. And, that, and, and, and you, you, you build that muscle. Well, you, right. So it's, build, it's, so it's building the muscle because even now I'm hearing my like clients that, because I, I say similar stuff to my clients, yeah. that I, and I get the feedback, right? So I'm just playing them on TV, yeah. is that it's... Yeah, and as soon as I think it, I get so emotional and so sad because I don't have it. We go right to the the negative narrative, you know, yeah. the, I, but I don't have that anymore and it's never going to happen again. And, but that's past. And that's, and well, so then we yeah. go through that. And so it's, it's about really getting what you just said and taking the flow to stay present. Like, okay, but just hold on to the feeling. Yeah. Remember what it sounded like or what it smelled like or what, you know, going through the senses so that they retain it because that's one of the tricks to be able to stay present. Yeah. So you're not, so, oh, that felt so but good. But people think they're not capable. I can't not I worry can't. about that. I can't let go of my right. past. And the fact of the matter is, like I said, if you challenge people to go, in one of those flow moments, last time you were really right. happy, it could have been sitting by a campfire or right. a fire pit in your backyard or something. But for an hour or so, you weren't thinking of anything else. Right. You were just there. And you're enjoying the hell out of it. You, you know, you go away for a weekend. That's just 
getting away from everything. Right, exactly. And shutting everything down. Right. So well, you do do it. Everyone has done it. You can do it. But the awareness isn't there to say that right. that's identifying that they're, they've done it. And that's the piece that I was saying at the beginning is that it, so that you don't get stuck in the back or the forward of this is the awareness. You're not, you're not staying aware enough to stay present because right. you're so habituated into doing the past or doing the present. I mean, the future to be dragging it either back or forward and not staying there because you're not aware. Yeah. It's right there and it has that. And that's the piece I think that really people, if you could just be, okay, I'm aware that I'm forecasting the future. I'm aware that I'm projecting out. I'm aware yeah. that I'm over planning for the what ifs. I'm aware that I'm threat generating. What about today? That right there is just yep. enough to get the brain train track, like I said last week, to shift over to the like relay station and just start a new track right. over and over and over again. And what I was going to say when you said the I can't, if you're in my office and you say I can't, <laughs> yeah. that immediately gets a response from me that is, so I can't means I won't try. Yeah. And I usually get a, huh, I didn't say that. But that's what I can't is. Did, I can't yeah. means I won't try. It translates. So there is no I can't. Right. I have a little sign in my office. It's over in the corner now. And it just <laughs> says, there is no I can't in this in this room. I think that's, it, that's yeah. it's years ago that I put it in. Like, there is no I can't in this room. Because that means you're not going to try. Yep. And what a waste of your time and mine. It's it's so simple. It's, just, you it's get, simple, but it's so difficult. Hey, you get in the car and put your favorite song on and drive for 15 minutes. And it's like, you know... People are happy in that time, and it's because they're not thinking of anything else. Exactly. Right? There's nothing better. They're just well, there. Exactly. Yeah. And that's why it's Learn such a how good, to do that. It's, it's such important. a good technique for visualization when you say go to some place that, you know, you don't, I don't give the person, like, their, their visual. I say go to a place, mm-hmm. wherever it is, that you remember being happy or felt good or yep. it smelled good and oh the you know and and when meditation first came out really big years ago yeah it was always directed with go to the beach and what i found when i first started my career <laughs> less, lesson learned i would start doing some of the images this is like 25 years ago and yep. i learned quickly that when you create a person's image for them which i never do now yep. i always ask what their image is and all that and build off of it Oftentimes there was trauma related to the, the sure. visions that I would give. So I'd be like, go to the beach. And, and then I would get, I can't, my friend drowned. Or I'm like, oh, my God. <laughs> you know, so I was like, it's all these things, <laughs> right. right? So I'm very yeah. careful because it's, I'm always about, the person has to self-generate. The per, they'll say, well, I can't think of anything. What do you think? I'm like, my image isn't going to be your image. Yeah. Occasionally I'll share one and say, well, one of my favorite images is, but that's because it was personal to me. And that usually helps jumpstart somebody. But when you do it for them, you say, imagine yourself, blah, blah, blah. So if I do ever do it, I always right. ask. Cause I do one visualization where I talk about flowing down the river. And I always ask, does you have any issues with anyone in the water? Do you ever fear drowning? Because My you have boat to capsized check. once. Yeah. Right? Yeah. yeah have, no, everyone's, yeah. You always have to. And I, so I always put it in shallow water. You're in complete control. Like, so, but because that's what yeah. the brain does is it gets so af- afraid and ahead of itself that it gets this afraid. whole realization was so important for me about those moments because you all have the you have these mental scrapbooks of these moments in your right. life that you treasure and you treasure them because you were just there right right exactly. it, it 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 you didn't get there it just forced you to be forced there because be that's where your attention was right, exactly. you weren't worried about you weren't relitigating the past you weren't fearful of the future you were just there that mm-hmm. night or that day and it's like that's try to be that way. And again, it's not don't plan. It's not, you know, wing it every day. It's just learn more to be in that moment. Wing it. Yeah. Because listen, all the things people are worried about now, right now, where they're sitting and what they're doing. Yes. They're okay. Yes. Right. Yes. I know. At the end of the day. So take a breath. I know. Breathe. Yeah. It's all good. Yeah. And 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 it's just another day. Mm-hmm. It's just another day. Yep people are so worried about stuff they don't have any control over yeah but they enjoy that again because i think it it just people are used to and Mm -hmm. seek out the victim mentality now well and people feel very persecuted against so they they bring it forward because they go with what they know yep you know go with what you know but go with the positive stuff that you know we're just we're just indoctrinated to go to the negative stuff right and and it doesn't mean that stuff's not out there cells yeah doesn't mean it's not out there. Right. We're not saying, we're not denying that. No. So. Yeah. All right. Well. Have a good birthday. Thank you so much. And for everyone that uh, 
missed out on any of the podcasts, certainly you can go back and listen to all your favorite podcast channels to catch me. Yes. And if not, then you can go to Facebook to Your Daily Game Face. And I will see you back here at our normal time on Wednesday the, what is that, the 3rd yeah. of February. Oh, yeah, see, Woo! calendar's changing. 3rd of February. <laughs> yep. And thank you for all the birthday wishes for everybody. Um, thanks, Joe. Thanks, Shirley. Thanks, Abby, et cetera, et cetera. And whoever else was listening, I can't see because my glasses aren't on. <laughs> <laughs> um, thank you, guys, and have a great week. <laughs>